talked funny. I had one of those raging Cindy Brady lisps. I was teased for dressing funny, for talking funny, for being funny. But then, in sixth grade, something happened. Boobs. <laughs> By ninth grade, I was pretty foxy. And thanks to speech therapy, I talked pretty too. So finally, I was attracting the kind of attention I'd always wanted from the opposite sex. Instead of being teased, I was being asked out. Before dating, my life had been kind of lonely. I had two parents who loved me, but primarily lived alone with a single mom. I went to a small school and only had a few friends. And there weren't any neighborhood children to really play with. So I guess I looked at dating as a way to escape a life of near solitude. My first boyfriend was a real gentleman and scholar. I dumped his ass. <laughs> my second boyfriend was a real wise guy. He dumped my ass. Nice guys finish last? When you're 15, I suppose so. Then I met Richie at a regional convention for our high school youth group. He was two years older and from Oklahoma. Handsome and charming and perfect. Pretty much all of the girls liked him, but it was me that he liked back. We spent the weekend flirting and courting and promised to stay in touch. And we did. We wrote love letters, the kind with handwriting and stamps that still existed in the mid-90s. <laughs> we talked for hours on the phone. He would drive from Tulsa to Dallas every few months to visit. We went on adventures, like pretending to drive forklifts at empty construction sites and scoring speeding tickets um, that we would hide from our parents on road trips that we were also hiding from our parents. <laughs> he was the person I told all my secrets to, and I was that person to him. We were together, but not, for two and a half years. In my naivete, I suppose I really thought we'd wind up together. But the summer before I was leaving for college, he called. He just wanted to be friends. I wanted to know what her name was. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> Her name was Emily. She was his age, from his town, and she chose, he chose her. He wanted to stay friends, but it was just too hard to listen to all his problems while Emily now got all of his affection. So I let him go. A decision I'd regret for years to come as the pain of the breakup passed, and I started to miss my friend. In the meanwhile, I landed myself in a three and a half year rebound with a Richard named Dick. I mean, a Dick named Richard. <laughs> Whatever. I finally cut that tie a few months after graduating college and decided that at long last my time had come to play the field. I played the hell out of that field, <laughs> ran it right proper into the ground for the past 12 years. <laughs> after moving out of Dick's house, I landed myself a swanky apartment I couldn't afford. Within weeks, I met a trust fund baby named Baron. Seriously, his name was Baron. <laughs> he was supermodel gorgeous in workout clothes, on a park bench, eating a banana. After a month of inseparability, he took me home to meet his parents in South Florida, in their home with 17 bathrooms. <laughs> While I was wearing a floor-length satin gown, we were immediately swept away in their Rolls Royce and taken to a gala where they were the guests of honor. Several months later, I'm sorry, I can't keep quitting my job every month to go scuba diving. I'm 22, I have to work. How long am I going to have to suffer because you are poor? <laughs> I don't think this is going to work out. Since Baron didn't work and I was going to law school, I applied to the University of Miami where we could scuba dive at will. We split up many months before I moved, but Miami wound up being the best school I got into, so off I went alone. My first semester of school, I met a dweeb at a kegger that I threw at my place. We became study buddies. I developed a raging crush on him, which I professed. He told me he was getting over a broken heart and to wait for him. And I did, for a whole semester. When I came back from winter break, he said he wanted to give dating a go. I was elated. That night we went out together with our respective college friends who were in from out of town. After a power hour of Jaeger bombs, he confessed. He'd been lying to my face that entire semester. He'd had a girlfriend. He was doing that to keep me on the hook. 
I responded like any self-respecting inebriated 23-year-old and bitch slapped him in front of all of our friends. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. I was pretty crushed. All that time, all that buildup, all those feelings, to be cruelly lied to and taken advantage of for social status. I swore I'd never date another lawyer again, and I haven't. That experience finally spawned a two-year stretch of near sheer singledom. Maybe I should be a lesbian. Maybe asexual. Maybe. Then, in my last year of law school, I met somebody at a big club party I threw for a girlfriend. I don't really remember meeting him, per se, but he was in my bed the next morning. <laughs> Turned out we actually liked one another and proceeded to spend all of our time together. Until one morning, a few short weeks later, I woke up and found him having turned blue. I called 911. The doctor said he wasn't going to make it. He was in multi-organ failure. 17 days on life support later, he woke up and wound up in rehab for a month for the Xanax addiction I never even knew he had. I waited for him. A month after he got back from rehab, he dumped my ass on his therapist's recommendation. <laughs> Again, devastated. I came from, back from da to Dallas from law school and began my career. There have been lots of boyfriends since then. Lots of time just playing the field. And even a few girls thrown in the mix. The last girl I went out with, I actually dumped a year ago on this very day. Right before Valentine's Day. I know. But she was making me crazy. She would text at all hours with various complaints. Bank problems, headache problems, menstrual problems, kid problems, mood problems. She was flaky and flighty and never seemed to know what she wanted. And we'd only been together two weeks. <laughs> when I complained to one of my best guy friends about this, he declared that I was no better equipped to date women than men were. <laughs> and I finally reconnected with Richie through the glory that is Facebook. He grew up to be just the amazing man that I always knew he would be. Successful career. Hebrew teacher at Sunday school, bone marrow donor to random stranger, <laughs> restores old homes and furniture and things, and he married Emily. Two kids, two dogs, gorgeous home they host charity benefits in. <laughs> at first, I seethed jealousy. He was supposed to be mine. Then I wept, wept tears of self-pity, and then I realized the moral of the story. It isn't the one that I've been in search of all these years, and I was never waiting for Richie to surface. But since high school, I've always known how it could be. I could have a great connection with somebody that was also a great person. But like my dad always says, you have to quit looking and just live. Settling for somebody on the B team has never been an option. I'm holding out for an all-star.